Billy Pierre Lacayton and Siam have come out with so far. I'm looking now to turn some of my attention to some of the fourth year students in criminology. And my understanding so far in the academies across Turtle Island is that we have been ignored, we have been denied, we have been uh, seen to be inferior to be able to write our own legislation and our own laws. And I can tell you right now that we have capable people of all walks of life that can step up and help doing the work from one to ten. The one to ten in my estimation is that I'm willing to write a letter. I'm willing to make a phone call and write a letter. I am willing to make a phone call to the Member of Parliament and to somebody in my family that can contact another friend to say that the Kwantlen people have moved to the front line and they need consistent help. Right now I can tell you that we are federal Indians under the Federal Indian Act and that we are currently in the BC Treaty Commission process. The BC Treaty Commission process is a six stage process. Who all has heard of the BC Treaty Commission process? So not everybody. So what uh, I'm going to respond a little bit to some of the work that's been done previous and talk about some of the work that Billy Pierre mentioned. So there's the Federal Court of Appeal. We have the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. These are authorities I'm now referring to. We have what we call the rule of law in Canada. And the rule of law apparently is governed by Canada's Constitution Act, 1982. And indeed, in 1982, we as Aboriginals identified in that Constitution Act are still recognized under the Indian Act. And so now what I'm doing is I'm helping people come to a little bit of understanding of governance over top of people that have Indian status cards that are currently at the treaty table. So we have this basic authority, the, the most powerful law on the land, which is our Constitution Act. But indeed, prior to that, we had the British North America Act. And prior to that, we had the Royal Proclamation of 1763. All of these authorities are still enacted. They are still alive. They are still instruments of our peace. They unite a group of people that are under government control since contact. These instruments called the Indian Act and now the BC Treaty Commission divide us. And so we look at these old authorities that bring us to this federal power, the federal duty, the federal responsibility according to the Sparrow decision in 1990 to equate federal powers with their federal duty to respect indigenous and aboriginal Indian people. We have worked tirelessly, many, many of us, including Douglas and Christine, and now Shelby and Siam, Lakaitan, many of us in this room have worked tirelessly over decades for some recognition. So who here can cite, besides the people that I have mentioned, Canada's Constitution Act, 1982, Section 35. 
Okay, I'll tell you what it is. The existing Aboriginal and treaty rights of the Aboriginal peoples of Canada are hereby recognized and affirmed by each of you. It is the only sentence in the whole Constitution Act 1982 that is misconstructed. And so because of its misconstruct, we had a person by the name of Elijah Harper that recognized that misconstruct of language. Because if we look at the subject verb object, the way we write a sentence, then we would see a very different section 35. In fact, during and before the lives of many of you in this room, section 35 used to be section 34. And a gentleman by the name of Tom Berger was the chief judge of Canada at the time. And he was sitting on his bench and he had his eyes looking over here, you know, what, what are the provinces doing? What are the feds doing? What are the Indians doing? And then all of a sudden he realized that minus the uh, Inuit territories of today, that every premier during 1981 was asked by then Prime Minister Trudeau, would you like to enter anything into the new constitution about Indians? And all of them, no, 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 we don't want it. No, no, no. And then Tom Berger's like, took off his chieftainship hat from the chief judge, left the bench, and said, uh, hello, I'm watching from the bench. All you premiers of the provinces must adhere and listen. You must replace section 34. Put it back in. And before they put it back in, they added the word existing. The word existing is a, a crucial word in law when it comes to a new deal in 2014, June. I bump all the way from 1982 when Canada's Constitution Act was patriated, April 11th. We apparently became a Canadian country, severing our ties with Britain in a way that we could create our own legislation and write for ourselves what we thought was good law for ourselves. So then we bump forward into 1985, 1987, and 1989. These years post 1982, Canada's then Prime Minister Trudeau, the current Trudeau's father, he was coming out of this thing called the White Paper, where we were given orders to become white and not Halkamalem, Coast Salish speaking peoples. So, you know. I, as I reflect on 1969, I can go to 1982, we bump into 1980, the 80s and the 90s, and the Prime Minister is wanting ratification of this new Constitution Act. So he pulled together all of the ministers again, and it was called the Meech Lake Accord. And we had one person by the name of Elijah Harper. When he put up his eagle feather in the legislature, he said no to the ratification of Canada's Constitution Act 1982, as it was written. There are four orders of governance that were discussed at these first ministers' conferences. What Elijah Harper wanted was he wanted the recognition of the four orders of governance, that we are federal Indians with federal powers, and that we will never extinguish our own rights, and no one else can do that. According to laws not written by us, but written by the settler and new governments. Alongside of our governance, we're still 
while we were told not to drum and to sing and to speak Halkamalem from 1927 to 1954, we still had people underground playing lacrosse and doing political meetings. We had people uh, organizing sports to enable people to be, to be around without being criminalized. So all along, we can talk about the laws that we have over top of our heads as Canadians being written into a foreign instrument the most powerful law of the land. And we have not yet been consulted. We've never given consent to how the wording has happened since Elijah Harper said no. In 1989, again, Canada wanted ratification of its new Patriated Constitution Act. And again, even more people voted no. So Canada's Constitution Act has been attempted to be amended and to be ratified and to, you know, it's being cited by academicians and lawyers and judges and as if it's an actual adopted, patriated constitution. All of the work that Queen Elizabeth and the Prime Minister did in 1982 was at their level of the United Kingdom between Canada as a uh, one of its subjects. As long as the sun shines, the grass grows, and the rivers flow, there are many agreements that have happened since contact. I could go on for many, many more uh, hours about uh, law. I have one from 1996 to 2000 with my daughter and son. A mistaken identity from 2000 to 2004, uh, fishing without a license, and from 2004 to 2013, uh, what was that one? That one. Oh. Possession. 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 Yeah, possession, possession. Yeah, possession of uh, our own sacred sockeye salmon. And so you're looking at a person that has been heavily, heavily criminalized. And when we have done our work, I chose to do the work because of what I was taught by my mother, that it is the greater good to serve. And I was taught that very young, that to be selfish is not our way, to share food. And I want to thank you, PJ, for bringing food in so that we can share a little bite together. I want to share with you that as I completed fighting against Canada over fish, I lost all of my hair and I was told in two biopsies I would never get it back. But I got it back. I got lots of it. And um, I also have uh, music. I drum, I sing, I'm learning my healthy own language. I, um, working with my children to support them on the front line. Siam especially is doing work with uh, fish farms. Uh, she has been in the courts and on uh, marine harvest, um, front line opposing marine harvest, that is, with the, her relatives from the Namgis and the Kwakwakiwa territory. My son is a glass blower and he helps support us in his own little way, uh, bartering and trading in glass uh, primarily. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about the direct action with Camp Cloud before um, I close off. And I just want to spend two minutes. Who here has all heard about Camp Cloud? Who has heard about Unistaten? And what about Ulush? And uh, yeah, so we have uh, right now some very powerful women named Christine Jack from Ulush, Frida Hewson from Unistatem, uh, Kanahus Manuel of 
the tiny house warriors. Uh, the matriarch camp in Victoria was just unseated by the military police last night. Camp Cloud was unseated on August 16, 2018, by a lawyer who is advocating for the Namdis opposing fish farms. The same lawyer that is opposing the fish farms unseated Camp Cloud, and that really makes me upset. Mm -hmm. I gave uh, this McDade an earful because we had a scheduled appointment for October 1st to make arguments about unseating Camp Cloud and extinguishing our sacred fire. And so, as it goes, my dear new sister Deborah uh, was with me. She came to the courts. I asked for the records. And I knew about the records all the way in August, but I was so shocked. I was completely astonished that the file number that they gave to records for with my name attached is KKK1. <laughs> you gotta do a meme about that. I have the records here. <laughs> so, I want to tell you why I think they gave me the file number KKK1. <laughs> on July 26th, it's a short story. On July, tw this is the front line, right? This is the front line in action. So, July 26th, there are maybe a dozen of us left in Camp Cloud. Everybody's been scared away because of what we now know to be psychological operations. Mm -hmm the theater of psychological operations. Who all knows about psychops? Look it up. Psychological operations is an actual uh, academy of learning on um, the front lines for the RCMP and CSIS and the various police. And so uh, I experienced on July 26th for, I think it was at least the third or fourth time that Burnaby tried to serve us uh, eviction notice. And it was hilarious because I had written an eviction or um, an affidavit to protect Camp Cloud under Judge Kenneth Affleck. So Judge Kenneth Affleck is the most notorious judge right now uh, hearing and uh, giving judgment to many of the people who have opposed Kinder Morgan and uh, the uh, broke their injunction. So I was protected by the Kenneth Affleck injunction as of March 15th. Then sometime during the Assembly of First Nations election in July, Burnaby's Minister of Justice exhausted his energies at 222 Main Street as a municipal uh, call out and that was on January 10th. Another long story. Uh, you can go to Camp Cloud, Kinder Morgan, and look at January 10th, but don't be shocked what you see, because I'm here. Mm -hmm. What you see, I'm, I'm here. I was really roughed up, but I'm okay. Uh, so July 26, 2018, for, I think it was the fourth time that Burnaby tried to serve uh, Camp Cloud. But because I have been very assertive that we have no treaty, that I stand as a federal Indian with federal powers, and I have no treaty with Canada. I'm a matriarch. I didn't put that on myself. My people put it on me. I was invited to a gathering where they put on uh, a robe, and they talked to me, and they sang, and, and did wonderful things, and then they said, welcome, you are a matriarch now. So when I stand before you. I stand before you saying this to the police every chance I got at Camp Cloud. I was talking, hello, I was talking uh, about being served and so on July 26th, the fourth attempt was eight RCMP officers came up through the narrow buffer zone, what they call parkland, and the, they were buffering two people, uh, one Asian and one white man. And so when they got to our temporary encampment, 
they were slapping on their eviction notice. And then I was awoken by uh, a, a Treaty 8 person by the name of Johnny Lee. We say, Quito, Quito, the RCMP are here. And I thought I was dreaming because I thought they're not allowed to be here. I, I won against them in the courts. What are you talking about? So, Quito, they're here. He shakes me harder. And then I bounce up and I go running out the door. And then I wasn't even awake yet. And I'm ripping the paper down and I'm throwing it at the guy. And I said, get out of here. I said, you're not welcome here with your garbage. Take your garbage with you. So I ended up taking this paper down and these officers are standing on the other side of the road. So I'm on the road and these people are touching our uh, uh, eagle eyes uh, carving cabin that I had asked to be made. And the donations came in to make everything that we made Camp Cloud of. All of the loving donations came from the community. So then they rush around to our two-spirited and our women's shelter, which is around the block. So there's uh, Shellmont and then there's Underhill. <coughs> so these guys quickly go around and they slap. Them. And now instead of watching them slap the uh, eviction notice on the building, I go to all these policemen. I'm going, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I said, you bastards. I said, what are you guys doing here? Get out. And they're standing back, not talking, nothing. I said, go. Right? And I'm a lone woman telling eight officers, get out. And now I'm not using profound words. I was thinking them. But then these two guys finished their work, July 26th. And now this is where the KKK comes in. So I said, KKK Canada, KKK Canada, wake up, wake up, KKK Canada, wake up, wake up, KKK Canada. And I had been singing, if you know Shelmont, Shelmont is a long road. I sung those cops and they were going like this. Marching. Wow. Marching. You know it. They and know so it. I'm the only soul, because Johnny is holding down the sacred fire, and I'm the only one, and nobody had a camera. And I'm like, this would be such a great camera, because then, by the time we go down, and I'm talk, singing that song for all these minutes, and one guy looked back at me, and I jumped up on top of the median that was that they had put on the side of the road. There were many, many frontline interludes that we had with what they call um, I hit, I hit the RCMP every single day from November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. So for eleven months. Anywhere from 20 RCMP, not including the I hit, they send anywhere from 6 to 10 I hit. On that same night, July 26th, was when the military moved inside of Kinder Morgan Gates. And I'm not the one that saw them move in. It was a mother of a Vancouver Sun photographer. And our, the way our uh, camp was situated, this woman came and she had her hands and she just looked so scared and she said, the military have moved in. I said, you'll be okay, don't worry about it. And she's like, okay. I said, they're not going to kill us, if they would have, they would have by now. <laughs> so trying to ease her, she was so scared looking. But I. After she left, I'm like, wow. After what I had experienced with those KKK, RCMP, and then hearing about the military, that's what I call a live theater, psychological operations. And I'm asking every one of you, as 
criminology students in your fourth year to really look at the laws in reflection to how they're being used. Give force and give effect to those rules and regulations that protect water. I'm asking for every one of you with potential to make a constitution that protects our Mother Earth. Make a living, breathing agreement to connect with one or two people at all times and become stream keepers. Yes. And communicate about your stream keeping. Any stream that you can Google map in your hood, if it takes you an hour to drive there and just go and check on it to make sure there's no maps. This is a proactive thing in law that I'm asking you to do is physically my daughter is one who helped discover that marine harvest and fish farmers and Department of Fisheries and Oceans are allowing these mats to be laid down in all of our streams, preventing our fish from spawning, directly impacting our Pulmo way of life, our very connection to our ceremonies and our songs and our dances and our practices are at threat. Shelby? Um, I think also 